And we are here. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to our industry chat today. I'm here with Joe Johnson. He is a fantastic friend of mine because he's a wonderful human being for starters, but he's, uh, he's also an incredible musician, and I'm going to get into everything he does. He is a renaissance man. Say what's up, Joe. What's up, Joe? No, what's up? <laughs> how you doing, man? <laughs> so what we're here to focus on is how to master audience engagement on stage. We planned on making this originally just about audience engagement, but he is such a pro that we realized that we couldn't fit all of on stage and off stage into the same webinar. So we're going to really focus on on those moments at shows uh, that will uh, will end up creating super fans that last you a lifetime. So let me tell you a little bit about Joe, all right? Uh, Joe Johnson is a multi-instrumental studio and live musician, composer, and sound designer. That's not it. He holds music residencies in several Memphis establishments, really legit ones too, by the way, uh, and he's developing a house show and small venue tour for 2020. His music has been in New York and Memphis Fashion Week, and his original scores uh, for theater have won awards and nominations for sound design and composition. He has a master's degree in literacy and has completed postgraduate work in the areas of linguistics, philosophy, and technology as applied to music as a communicative medium. And I'm <laughs> telling you, every time I talk to this guy, I learn something, man. Did I get all that right? Yeah, I think so, man. I, <laughs> um, our openers or whatever, you show up and the crowd is, they're not a full crowd yet. They have, so a crowd is a body. You know, a crowd as a crowd is an organism. That's where you have this concept of groupthink, where you get this massive. It's probably easier, actually. I mean, I've, I've on a few occasions, have gotten to play in front of a crowd of a thousand people. And in those moments, that crowd is really easy to control, believe it or not, because you have this ability for, you know, everybody's one person, you know, and you you put your hands up and they all put their hands up and you're like, this is way easier than i would assume but then you have what is the case for a lot of us is you walk into a bar and there's like all these tables all over the room and everybody's you know i'm on my phone i'm in my drink i'm in my conversation and so that's a not yet assembled crowd it's like a bunch of little micro crowds all over the room so Absolutely. that's one that's one type of crowd and then the other type of crowd is the crowd that's already the organism so like that might be a later night group. I play some casino things where I start at like 10 o'clock at night. Everybody's already there waiting, you know, and they're, they're like entertain me. The other crowd I'm having to kind of say, hey, I'm here to kind of get you guys in without saying it. But like my goal is to get them into a crowd that might be ready for the next act or ready for my second set or whatever. If that makes sense, the two kind of differences. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of talked about how a lot of times you'll identify multiple crowds within an audience. Um, are you, do you, how do you identify that? How do you compartmentalize that? So, and let's go maybe with the, the completely spread out 6 PM crowd at first, if we could, um, for my, for my sake, cause I think I can bounce. So we're talking about the crowd that's already not assembled. It's a bunch of, and this actually is the same for the big crowd. Um, within each crowd or each table, there's usually, I mean, if you've sat at a restaurant with somebody, there's probably a more dominant person at your table. You know, there's, there's the person who's loud and that may not be your person, but there, there's a person that dictates where the attention goes. So if that person who's holding everybody's attention at this one table will turn their attention to you on the stage, then that whole table becomes your table. And, uh, so I'm looking like the moment I start playing also, like I have a few, like at the beginning, I, I just play different kinds of songs, you know, I've got a, and this may be later on in our talk, but like I'm fishing up first in my first, probably five songs, first 10, 20 minutes on stage. I'm trying to figure out what songs people are kind of jiving to, you know, maybe like I play like Van Morrison and this guy who's probably about 60 you know, quits talking so loud about, you know, the football game and looks to me because he connected. So then I can make that checklist and he might even tell the rest of his table to shut up because I'm playing his song. And then I might bounce to something in the 80s that hits somebody else in another part of the room. So 
I'm looking for the people who seem to have capital or um, influence over their small little micro crowd, if you will. So over their table, their area. And if you get one table paying attention, they get quiet. Then the table next to them gets quiet. And, you know, it's just like you see somebody like you're at a, you know, in the street, you see somebody go, and you're going to look, you know, you're like, oh, shit, something bad's coming or good or who knows. And we want to see, you know, we're, we're social creatures and we want to participate. But if I can kind of do this on a small scale all over and slowly gain the attention. So then once I have that one person's attention, I have the opportunity to, to engage them on some level. And, uh, and I am happy that I once upon a time got to be your music consultant to help you grow in that place. We're actually reopening um, our, uh, we rebranded it, repackaged it a little bit, and it's now called our Music Business Mentorship Program. But it's basically what you went through to get to this point of, uh, I didn't win your awards for you by any means, but I did make you look better online. We did, we did a lot of stuff. We did amazing things together. Well, that... Oh, another thing to look at is the power of asking by um, Amanda Palmer. Um, sorry, but like that, you know, to talk on the consultantship, like I ha I've had these skills in my life and did not know how to put them into a, a fully packaged deal. You know, I had little parts of the package, but my work with you, like even just in the very aspect of the accountability and the structure, that it provided, like it gave me a path to, and it, it got me structured, it got me organized. And like, that's changed my, it's bullshit. You know, it got me out of like working a part-time side hustle job and full on into music. And that structure there is priceless, you know? And for what I paid to, to be a part of that, I've made, I make at least like, 30 times what I paid for that a year, at least. That's, and that's always a pretty go. good investment. Tell me a stock exchange that'll provide that for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for the endorsement, man. We, we are closely following your career, and we're going to have you back for another webinar. Um, Thank you to all, the, all of the attendees. We're not doing an FAQ on this one, but um, check out uh, our community online, and we'll have some FAQ there later on. And uh, thank you, as semi-average Joe, Joe Johnson. You are a king amongst princes. We love you. <laughs> I can't wait to see you again, man.